Hi, my name is Saliba and in this video I'll teach you how to animate a washing machine in After Effects. So to get started I've illustrated this very simple washing machine so let's quickly go through the layers. Here at the bottom we have the washing machine itself, then we have the shapes in the washing machine, those are the shapes that's going to spin around, then we have the smears so the shapes will turn into these smears, then we have the cover that's covering everything up and then the top of the cover that's going to sort of open to so sort of the lid you could say. So if you want to support the channel you can go and download this project file there's a link in the description and you can take a deeper look at my keyframing or use my illustration to create this animation. And what we're going to do is actually add a null that's going to control all of the rotation in the washing machine. So first we'll actually just select the cover and then we'll actually press command control R to get the rulers, it will just drag out some guides so we can align that null perfectly in the center. You can see that where these two sort of guides meet in the center, that's the center of that circle. So we'll go to layer, new, null object, put it on top and we'll just call this the rotation. Then we can take it and drag it into that center and it will just sort of snap so now we can just remove these guides and press command or control R to remove the rulers. So now we're going to take the smears and the shapes and parent them to the rotation null. So that way when we start to animate this you can see that it rotates from the center. So now we can start by actually adding that animation. So we'll add a keyframe at the very start. Then we'll go 10 frames ahead by pressing command or control shift then clicking the right arrow key one time. And the thing is that we want a bit of anticipation for this movement. You see, it won't just start rotating right away. It will sort of go a little bit to the right and then start rotating left and speed up. So we'll just add a bit of rotation to the right like this. So it's going a bit up to the side. Then we'll go 10 keyframes ahead again. And we'll just sort of start to animate it around here. And we really want a lot of rotation and we're going to emphasize that in the easing. So if we go into the graph editor, you can really see the change here in the rotation. Now we can go a few seconds ahead and then we want to rotate this a lot, but we want to sort of emphasize the rotation most at this point. So this should be about fine. And we'll just drag this up so we can actually see what we're doing. And here we will select the keyframes and press F9. And we can just zoom in and we have to remember to turn on the auto zoom graph height so we can actually see what we're doing here. And we'll just drag these out and here we want it to accelerate because this is the point where we want it to change between the shapes and the smears. So we want this to be very seamless and the way you do that is that you change them at the point of time where it's at the highest speed. So we can do this by selecting the point drag it down the handle and we're working with the value graph here so this displays the value over time and therefore this is a steep value increase. And we can sort of try and line this up so this curve catches the other curve so it's still smooth and then we'll just sort of try and make it linear here towards the end and that way when we play this back you can see it has the high speed here. Maybe we want to increase the overall speed so we can just drag this last keyframe upwards like this and align it again and now we can just preview it really quickly and you can see it's just rotating. So here at the end we want it to stop again and we can quickly go ahead and animate that. So let's just go 10 keyframes ahead again. Here we'll just make it go down and a bit up to the side so that way it will go up, stop and then go down and sort of settle here uh, at, the, at the bottom. So we'll just adjust the easing so it's fitting like this. We can go 10 keyframes ahead again. And here we just want it to go a bit up to the other side like this. And then we, maybe we can go sort of six keyframes ahead. So press command and control, click the right arrow key five or six times. And then we just want it to go down here a little bit up to, to the left side. So it's sort of settling, it's going back and forth. And then we can go four keyframes ahead and we can just set this rotation value to zero. So now if we zoom in, 
we can go ahead and adjust the easing. So we just want to ease it roughly in the center, sort of like this. And now if we play this back, you can see it sort of stops and it goes back and forth. Now you can see it's a bit too extreme on some of these values. So you can really just zoom in and try and adjust this. You can see this is the zero point. So that's what we're trying to sort of wiggle around. So we just drag this in quite a bit. And also we want to drag this down a bit because it has to decay exponentially. So that way it really decays quickly at the start. So now you can see it sort of settles, it goes back and forth and decays. So now we can actually go to the point at the start where it has the highest speed or the highest value change. So you can see that's right here. And then we just want to take the shapes, press command or control shift D to split the layer and just drag it here to the end where it sort of starts to decay in that speed. So you can see that's right here where we want it to change back and just place it there. And then here in the space where you can see there's no shapes, that's where we want to turn on the smears and just position it and sort of trim it. So press command and control shift D here to delete the end. And that way you can see it sort of switches to the smear. And then when it slows down, it switches back. Now to take a look at the smears, this is very simple. These are just all circles uh, with a stroke on them. So if we, as an example, just take a look at, let's say this blue one, you can see there are these three lines. And the thing is that we have a stroke and I've just enabled a dash. So that way you can see that there are some gaps in the stroke. And this is just really the way to show that it's rotating around because if it was just one line all around the circle, you wouldn't see any movement. So when you do this and you start to duplicate it and change the color to the color of the shapes in the washing machine, you can see that you get a sort of result like this. And then when it starts rotating, it looks really cool. And the sort of centrifugal force is pushing everything out to the side because it's rotating so quickly. And that's why there's nothing here in the center. So now you can see when it starts to move the fastest here, the shapes change to the sort of smears and then it changes back here at the end. So we can try and go ahead and preview that entire thing. And now we really just want to add a bit of animation to the shapes because they wouldn't be so still. You see here at the start, when they start to move up to the side, some of them would fall down a bit, rotate a bit maybe. And also here towards the end, when they sort of start to settle, they would also move a bit back and forth. So we can go to the layer with the shapes here at the start. We can open it up and you can see that I've split it up into these different shapes. And you have to remember to set the anchor point to the center of the shape so you can actually do the rotation right. And do that by going to the pen pine tool, clicking that and just selecting the anchor point and moving that around. So we can go to the very start here. And I really just want to select the layer and here in the search bar, I'll search for position. So that way I can add a position keyframe to each and every one of them. Like this, and then I'll search for the rotation and you only want to add the rotation to the objects that actually aren't circles because you can't really see circles rotating when the anchor point is in the center of them. So you can see that's the light blue, that's the blue. So now we can select the shapes and press U to actually see all of the keyframes. And if we press U on the rotation up here, we can go to the top. And as this is moving up a bit, some of these shapes would fall down and rotate down a bit. So we'll just start by selecting these. We can just drag them down a little bit. And here with the light blue shape, we can press W to get the rotation, rotate it a bit and move it down. And we can also do that with the sort of blue here, move that down a bit. And that way we can take all of the keyframes here, press F9 to ease them. And we just want to offset them a bit. So we want to move them two keyframes to the right. So we press all the option, click the right arrow key two times. And maybe we can also offset some of these keyframes. So just by a tiny bit. And here, if we play it back, you can just see you have that slight movement of the objects here. And you can really exaggerate this as much as you'd like. 
So we can go back in here and take the shapes and move them a bit more if we'd like to do that. So if we try and select this blue one, can move that a bit more. And you can really just play around with this. So you can see the objects are actually are sort of interacting with each other in the washing machine. So we can do some similar stuff to the end here. So if we go over here and we go to the point where it's up on the left side, we can go to the shapes here. We can search for the position again. Add a keyframe to all of the position properties like this. And then we can search for the rotation again. And we just want the rotation for the light blue. So let's see the light blue and the um, blue one. So we can press U to see the keyframes and press U up here in the rotation. Then we go ahead to the point where it's up to the right side. And we just want to take some of these shapes and just move them up to the side a bit, sort of like this. And again, press W to add some rotation. like this and then we go to the point where it's to the left again and here we just want to take them and sort of move them down to where they belong so this is just moving them around a bit and, and trying to see what works really at the end so i think this should sort of work so we can select all of the keyframes press f9 then we can press alt or option click the right arrow key two times to offset it so as you can see, that sort of settles and we can make it a bit more interesting by just offsetting some of these keyframes towards the end here. And this is just really by dragging them out and trying to see what works. So this could be something like this. And you see it just adds a lot that they are offset a, a tiny bit. So this is really just something you have to play around with and sort of see what works. But I think this is fine for now. And we can go ahead and add sort of the animation to the lid opening here, you know, the sort of cover. So that's actually quite an interesting way of doing this. Now, if you take the layer, select the pan behind tool, click and hold the command and control to make it snap to that left side. We can turn on the 3D for the layer, click R as a rotation. Then when we start to rotate it, you can see that it sort of gets flat, but we really want to sort of keep that width of the stroke all the way around. So it seems like a 3D object. Now the way we're going to do that is that we'll open up the layer, go to the contents and the group, then select the stroke, and we'll just set this stroke width to one. Then we'll go to layer and we'll go to the layer styles. And here we'll just select a stroke. So this stroke, you can sort of alter in size so you get the same stroke width as you had before. And you can just change the color by selecting the eyedropper tool here, and clicking the color up from the stroke. So if we say this is a, a fine sort of width, we can go to the rotation again. And here we just want to see, okay, where do we want to start to animate this? So maybe when it's just about finished, so right around here, we'll add a keyframe to the rotation, go a bit ahead. Then we can start to rotate it outwards. And as you can see, because we have added that stroke as a layer style, it keeps that width. So we can add it all the way out here. So this is just a bit of an overshoot. And then we'll go a bit ahead again. And we just want to drag it back a tiny bit. So like this, just F9 to ease it. And we're just going to select the value graph again. And just do some very, very simple easing to this, just to make it a bit more interesting. So sort of like this should be fine. And then if we play this back, you can see we have that lit opening animation. Now the overshoot is a bit extreme. So we can really just zoom in here. Sort of try and adjust this a bit and try and play it back again. And you can also see here, you can add some easing if you want to the start. So a bit more easing. And then your result should look something like this. Now you can see the, the rectangle blue shape here isn't aligned perfectly. You can see it's sort of floating a bit. But we can just go into the shapes, press U go to the last keyframe of that light blue one, right around, let's see, that's here. And we can just sort of drag it down a bit. And also that's the same with the yellow circle, so you can just select that. And we can also drag that down a bit if we'd like. So you can see it's sort of lining up probably here towards the end. But now if we zoom all the way out and try and preview the entire thing, we can see what we have gotten so far.
So this looks great. And at the end, we just want to add some, some movement to the washing machine itself. So it's sort of going a bit back and forth. Now I know in real life, this wouldn't really move, but it just adds a lot to the animation and the overall interest. So we'll command or control A to select everything, right click and pre-compose and just call this the washing machine. Then we'll go to the start, go to effects and presets and search for CC slant. Drag that onto the layer. And here we just want to select the floor by clicking this sort of target and just putting it down here on the floor. So now towards the start, we'll add a keyframe to the slant. Just press U so we can see it. And we know this animation at the start takes 10 keyframes. So we'll just go 10 keyframes ahead. We'll slant it a bit to the right. Then we'll go 10 keyframes ahead again. So to 20. And we'll just slant it in the other direction. And now we just want it to go back and forth very quickly. So maybe in a free frame interval. So we can press command and control, click the right arrow key three times. Here we just set it to 0 0.5, go three frames ahead again, and we can set it to minus 0 0.5. So we can add the easing, and then we can simply take these two last keyframes, just go three frames ahead, and we just keep on copying this. So it gets easier every time, sort of like this. And we have to see where this stops. So it stops right around here, and this is where we want it to end. So let's see, we can end it right here. So just delete these keyframes. Here we can go into the graph editor just to see what direction we're going in. So you see that's moving to the left. So now we just want to move it a bit more to the right, and then just settle it to zero again here. And we just want to drag out these handles and sort of try and ease this. So maybe this is a bit extreme. We can just drag this value down a bit. But we'll just see in a moment if, if this sort of fits. And we can go to the start here and just ease this a bit as well. So now we can try and drag this down so we can actually preview the entire thing. And as you can see already here, it's a bit too slow in this point of time. So we can really just take this and drag this in. So you can see it sort of starts earlier. And that looks fine. And then here towards the end, you can see it's a bit sloppy. So it goes to the right, then to the left, and maybe we want it to go to the right again. So here we can just add a bit of movement to the left, go a bit ahead, and then set it to zero. So it goes to the right. Now we can go into the graph editor, if we drag this up, and we can just adjust these last keyframes really quickly. Sort of like this, and we can try and play the last part again. So you can see that looks a lot better, and now we can try and preview the entire animation as one. So as you can see, we all have a very great movement. We have that morph between the shapes to the sort of smears, we have the washing machine going back and forth. We have a bit of overshoot and we have the sort of door opening uh, at, at the end and everything just plays really nicely together. So if you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like, post a comment down below and tell me if you have any problems with this tutorial or what I should be animating next. If you create anything from this, make sure to share it with me on Instagram at Oliver Randorf and make sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications to get notified when I upload future videos. That's all for now. Till next time.